So let's explore the React Native CLI project directory structure and see what kind of files and directories are available over there and modify its very basic default uh, application or default JS file and then make something like this in which we have added two buttons and then added even handlers for this and we are passing something through the binding of this function. So let's explore and let's learn how React Native CLI project structure is and how they are and how we can further change the code and then get the output like this with the help of hot reloading. So let's do this. Let's see the directory structure of React Native CLI project. We have a test directory used for the uh, testing our application, test, writing test cases. And you see some different folders over here, which is Android, iOS, which are actually not available and they are not present in Expo CLI uh, or Expo CLI managed project. Uh, this is React Native CLI and you have an Android folder and you see the Gradle files over here which were actually created and Gradle was built when first uh, project was uh, created and executed. And you see that uh, our app is over here which is actually Android, some part of the app is Android and which will actually bridge with the uh, React Native. And you see we have a main, we have a Java and we have actually our main activity which was actually loading over here if you see uh, here. So this is our main activity which is actually created and our APK file finally generates. And uh, this is our Android manifest file which will be actually used later on when we are adding some permissions. Let's say for example default internet permission is already over there. So that's actually our Android folder. And if uh, I was running my project on Mac machine, definitely the iOS uh, project uh, was also created and I could uh, actually run my React Native CLI project on iOS emulator as well. And no modules are uh, the modules which are actually dependencies installed for a React Native CLI project. So these are some configuration files. These are git attributes and git ignore. I also discussed this in Expo CLI, so let's discuss it again. Git ignore actually a file that uh, uses git to ignore all those files which are, or even the directories which are mentioned in uh, git ignore so git will actually ignore these files and directories while uh, pushing our code on uh, git uh, based protocol uh, services just like bitbucket github this is our uh, <coughs> uh, prettier uh, for uh, the uh, making our code like look prettier and will automatically adjust the uh, GSX and then we'll uh, fix that. I also installed some extensions. I also have prettier uh, extension over here installed and which will actually use for the JavaScript and JSX. I use it for JavaScript, JSX, JSON and uh, also for this. For React Native it is actually required for this and for this. So it will actually do all this uh, job to make our code look prettier and auto uh, indent our code. <coughs> watchman configuration file is available over here. You can delete that. Watchman configuration is uh, used creating a flow of your uh, application not required over here. So app.js is just like we have in Expo CLI. This is our main file where all the code and the output that you see is written over here. So if I open and see, this is actually the code which is a bit bigger than Expo CLI uh, because you see that you have a lot of things over here uh, written. So I will explore this later on. App.json, again the configuration in this, we just have a project name, nothing much. 
we have babel configuration for the gsx use for gsx index or js is js is actually our app registry and the entry point where we specify the app name from the app.json and this is our actually the main app uh, component which is actually app.js and it's coming from there we have metro configuration uh, js file we have package.json which is actually the dependencies and uh, you see in dependency we have only two dependencies react and react native that's all we don't have any react dom over here we don't have expo over here uh, we have nothing and you see that these are scripts so we use actually uh, react native run android over here so these are the dependencies we actually don't write uh, uh, package.json like this over here we instead uh, install through the uh, terminal or the command line so let's explore uh, app.json so this is our app.json uh, app.js file and uh, you see some imports over here like react is definitely required for the react native project and there are some components imported from react native over here and there are some react native libraries like uh, the header that we see over here in our application is actually coming from there so this is our header welcome to this so i actually let's for example this is the component so i make it side by side and uh, let's say for example just remove this header i will just comment out i just save this and you see because of hot reloading and usb debugging has been enabled the header has been removed from here and let's change some more thing let's say step one we are on it so this is how we actually modify and this is my physical device and I am modifying my uh, app.js file and you see that I don't have internet connected right now I am disconnected from the internet which means that I don't need to have JavaScript bundles uh, developed and I don't need my device to be connected on Wi-Fi I don't need internet so I can actually uh, through USB debugging I can actually connect uh, from my device through USB cable and I can do that so let's fix some few, few things we have an error over here so I can actually make it uh, or convert it into a arrow functions like this and uh, uh, there are some things over here and I can actually clean it if I want to let's say for example I don't need anything I don't need status bar over here I don't need any safe area I need style sheet let's say and let's do a bit cleaning definitely I have errors because I have removed a lot of things over here and I am cleaning my main app.js file so I'm removing these styles from here so let's move it like this so we have an empty object over here and I will also remove this like let's let's do this so I can create my app arrow function which is actually a component over here and this component actually oh yes I know I know I know it has to return something so view text hello so you see a tiny hello over there so let's make it a container so we have styles dot container so I will create a container we have styles over here this style can styles can be anything because it's just an object 
and I will create a container right so align content is center justify content is center and yes flex one and align items in center you can also increase the size of this uh, text so let's write inline styles with the double uh, curly braces so font size is 30 so hello from rn cli so this is our uh, uh, project let's add the button over here <coughs> so we have a, sorry we have a title prop we need to have a title prop over here click me and this is my button right so I can tap on this and this is default button available and the alignment is uh, by default it's vertical so whenever I add elements it's gonna go in a vertical way like this right so to make it in a horizontal way I need to change the flex direction of this container <coughs> let's say if I want these buttons to appear side by side I can use a view view just like uh, div in uh, HTML to to control and to wrap up your elements so I can go and style and I can say that flex direction is actually row and I can do this and we have an error over here so what kind of error is so now we have flex direction row in which we have uh, all the child elements displaying on row we can actually add some padding by further wrapping them in views like this and we can add some inline styles for padding let's say 10 so it's not a good practice to have inline styles always until if you have only one in one or two inline styles and they are actually not repeating for the similar elements because then you need to do a lot of changes so that's how actually you can put some buttons over here we can also add an event handler over here let's say on press and uh, <coughs> I can uh, add uh, anonymous function like this and I can say that this function by default returns something so I can say that I can put an alert right there and this is the first one so if I click I'm getting an alert over here all right so let's name them differently let's see button one button two from button one and again I can repeat this 
from person two. Like this. Need to rename it to two. Like this. So instead of having n line function, anonymous function, why don't we write our own function over here? So let's say, for example, button pressed. So need to have and uh, can be an anonymous function can be a, a typical uh, uh, vanilla JavaScript style function let's say button event so this is also true but let's do the error function which is ES6 standard very much used by react So I will actually bind this function over here. Pressed. And let's have an alert. I am pressed. Not impressed. I'm pressed. So I'm pressed, I'm pressed. And you see that I did not call a function like this because if I do this, it's going to trigger right away as soon as this, this application is loaded. Like this. So I need to actually provide a reference of this button and then it will be called whenever on press button, on press event is triggered. So how about if we want to send these buttons, then I need to bind this. So I, or I write anonymous function. So I bind, I send this. And the second thing is the message. Let's say hi from button one. And I'm getting over here this message and I can display it right away so in this case I am passing this string high from button 1 like this and in this case nothing has been passed so just getting an empty object so I can actually do this over here as well and I am saying that this is button 2 so if I tap on this, I get this. If I tap on this, I get this button too, which is actually sent from here. All right. So this is uh, a little bit about the play around of the React Native CLI application running on my physical device. And uh, uh, also we can run this on emulator I am not connected with any internet connection I have connected my device with the USB with the USB debugging enabled so that's all for today so we have seen the directory structure of react native CLI app.js file the entry point and some uh, default code we modified that we created our own project our own file our own text and two buttons and even handler that actually we use to show an alert so that was all about the react native exploration now we can work on both react native cli or uh, expo you have seen that no internet is required for uh, running our project uh, because we have connected our physical device through USB debugging. In next video, I will discuss about how we can push our code on uh, GitHub and the very basic Git command so that you can get started with the Git and get used to of it. See you in next video.